Welcome to Sid and Malcolm, brought to you exclusively on MalcolmPresents.com. Good morning, Sid. Good afternoon, Malcolm. Oh, oh yeah. It's a, oh, actually, it's afternoon here also. Sorry about that. Well, that's okay. Yeah, because uh, no, normally I do the shows in the morning, so I always say good morning. As a matter of fact, I do my running in the morning, you know, like about uh, six, seven o'clock, actually well, uh, running and walking. Right. So I see everybody, I say good morning. But like when I do it in the afternoon, I still say good morning. <laughs> and no one has to correct you because whatever time it is for you is your time. Right. In, in, my, in my head, it's the morning. Absolutely. You know, uh, my kids are on the uh, on the uh, left coast. So when I speak to them, it's always morning. And uh, I enjoy saying good morning to them. And I don't expect them to say good afternoon yeah. to me. So I put my karma in into their time zone. Oh, good. Yeah, well, I, well, that's why we're, we're, our karma is the same because I'm in the left coast also. So I'm, 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 I'm uh, uh, you know, in the same time zone as your kids. So, absolutely. I, I don't know if that means anything. <laughs> I used to anyway, live anyway. Many years ago, I used to live on the left coast in a little town called Dana Point. It's a little south of Laguna. Yeah, that's uh, right on the ocean there. Yeah. And uh, I worked in San Juan Capistrano and lived in Data Point. Did, did, the birds, did the, the, the uh, what, what kind of birds come back to San Juan Capistrano? The uh, swallows, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but I would say when I first came out here, I had to go see the swallows returning. And you know something, they didn't return. No, a lot of times, because a lot of the buildings now look like the church. The Even the McDonald's have that look. So the birds go to every other building in San Juan Capistrano. Well, we have right over here, we have a, a, a sanctuary with the, the birds that come, uh, you know, they're flying from Alaska or parts of Canada to um, uh, Mexico. You know, and, and uh, I think they do it in the, in the winter time from Canada, they go to Mexico. And they stop over here, right over here in Sherman Oaks. And it's, it's beautiful. One of our one of our sons, our son Ryan, uh, is a bird man, uh, and has become uh, very knowledgeable in in all birds. He uh, has documented over eight hundred varieties that he's seen and photographed and written about, and he has written stories for Audubon. He's written stories uh -huh. for a number of magazines, and uh, he just has an acumen of getting things that he really gets involved with. He really gets involved with. So wherever he goes across the country, he's on his way right now to San Francisco. Uh, he is going to take his uh, younger brother out on a whale watching bird trip out of San Francisco Bay. Oh, interesting. Well, the, the big thing, well, not the big thing, but the sad thing is happening now. I guess your, your son knows that about the, the gray whales are dying. They're finding them washed up on the beaches, the, the uh, adults and the uh, kids. And they have this great sense, I think, the same way as the birds, they go from Alaska to uh, uh, Mexico for, you know, uh, depending on the weather. And But now they're dying along the trip and they don't know why. Wow. A lot of times it is these red, these red tides that happen. The water becomes full of uh, lack of oxygen. Sometimes there is bacteria in the red tides and they can't control them. It's just nature's way of cleaning house. Yeah, well, well, they think it, it, it might be the, the warming of the waters. Of, yeah. Because uh, they have that with the uh, Chin Chinook uh, salmon. And uh -huh. the, the water, I mean, when they're coming back to spawn, the water, they like cold water and the waters are warm and they're dying and it might be a shortage of them for, uh, you know, it, it might be like the extinction of them if something is not done. I don't think things are ever that dire. Our planet... Well, has gone through a lot and will continue to. Well, well yeah, our planet has, but not, well, I think we spoke about it. Our planet has, but humanity might not be in the planet. Earth might be here, but it might be in a different form. And, well, and 65 million years ago, a, a great comet hit the planet and killed all the dinosaurs off because uh, we everything got dark and there was no uh, plants, food. Uh, all of the food hierarchy died, animals died. And then mammals took over yeah. and mammals came on and that's how we're here.
Yeah, well, and as a matter of fact, I saw a movie on uh, Netflix the other day about such a thing, or a media crashing, in, or different parts of the media crashing into this, into the earth and uh, destroying it, or destroying what, what was living on earth. But anyway, getting back to other subjects, well, another, we were talking about uh, just before we got on, uh, uh, we recorded about the, the passing of Charlie Watts. Yeah, that's yeah. something that has effects on me personally and on the charity. Uh, in 1994, we were in our uh, third year. At that time, we were just picking up food at Jones Beach Theater. And uh, in Labor Day weekend, this weekend, 27 years ago, MTV uh, launched us uh, by talking about the first band to join Rock and Wrap It Up. And that was the Rolling Stones. And uh, the Rolling Stones had been touring already for uh, probably 25 years before that. And Mick Jagger um, always had this idea that they had so much leftover food in every city they toured in. Why not, you know, give it to the hungry? And he, he thought about it enough that he put it in his contract. Of course, nobody did it until we came along and in 1994, uh, the Rolling Stones uh, uh, said, oh my God, it's exactly what we uh, have wanted to have done and now we have your organization. And uh, MTV uh, had a uh, newsman by the name of Kurt Loda. And Kurt and I had become friendly in 1988 when uh, both of us had gone to a Joan Jett concert together. We were probably the only straight men there. Uh, it was all gay men and lesbian girls and girls that loved uh, Joan Jett. And Joan was always bisexual. Uh, and we just kind of hung like nearer each other. And we, we were talking and talking and, you know, what do you do? I said, I'm a scientist. What do you do? He says, I'm in the news business. And I wound up, uh, not knowing who he was, I wound up giving him a ride after the concert to a, uh, an after show party with Joan Jett. And I, I was working and I, know I was leaving the next morning. So he had invited me to go in and I just couldn't. I dropped him off and we stayed friendly. And uh, in 1991, uh, I was doing, uh, I, I was already serving as human rights commissioner for Nassau County. And um, I became friendly with a musician named Branford Marsalis. I met Branford uh, at Jones Beach Theater with Bruce Hornsby in 1991. And I asked Branford, uh, and he was a deadhead like I was, as was Bruce Hornsby, uh, if he would speak at one of my human rights events. And he said, love to do it. And I, uh, Said, you know what? I'm friendly with some guy at MTV. Let's get you some coverage for this because it's really great you're doing this. And Kurt Loder covered the event at Hofstra, and uh, he he got a lot of accolades because Branford was fabulous. Yeah. Uh, and and then three uh, and then two years later, when I wanted to launch Rock and Wrap It Up, I called Kurt and he did a two and a half minute piece on Labor Day weekend. 1994, which was a very long piece. And uh, he got Mick to speak and uh, I spoke and we were able to launch our charity. And within uh, 10 years, we had 160 bands. And it was all because of, all because of the credibility of the Stones. So, did you ever get to meet uh, the Stones? I did not. Uh, I probably could have met uh, Keith Richards because he was at an event that I had been invited to. There was a fundraiser for Ronnie Lane. Uh, Ronnie Lane was in the group Faces started by Rod Stewart. And uh, there was called the Arms Concert, Arms Concert, Artists Resolved to Fight a Multiple Sclerosis. Mm -hmm. And uh, backstage <laughs> was Mick Jack, uh, was uh, Keith Richards. Yeah. Jimmy Page, Eric Clapton, uh -huh. and, and the greatest of great guitarists, Jeff Beck. And uh, they all played at Madison Square Garden and I got to you know, meet them, but not know them, you know, shook a hand and speak to them. Yeah. And uh, 
Jeff Beck was the greatest of all of them. They all literally, when Jeff played, Clapton, Page, uh, Richards went around him to support his music because he didn't sing. He just played instrumental. Right. And uh, it was one of the really high points of my life to be invited to that show. Mm -hmm. I took my cousin Mark with me. He should rest in peace. But uh, the Rolling Stones did some other things for us. Uh, when the time came, uh, their manager, and they were out of a group out of Hamilton, uh, Bermuda, called TNA Management. Tit and Ass Management, <laughs> and that was then that was the name of the management company. And uh, when I needed reference, uh, and they eventually moved to Toronto, but if I had a bad manager that didn't know us, uh, I would give them the reference of the management company, the Rolling Stones, and then go rock and wrap it up. Of course, you have to use them. They <laughs> pick up everywhere, and you know I didn't have to give my own reference. I let them do it and that was worth to me malcolm everything because it, it gave us not just the status but it gave us the ability for them to brag about that they were feeding the hungry with food that had already been would have been thrown out okay now i i, I have a question now that we're together and it's a, really a selfish question sure. when the uh, uh when rock concert when the, uh, the rock concerts in l.a with, you know, I don't know who's going to be here, whoever, and you're partici uh, participating in it, can I get backstage passes? Probably not backstage passes, but we could get you to pick the food up. <laughs> what well, we'll, 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 we'll part, we'll do a uh, part and parcel. Well, you know, you really can't stay for the show. That's, that's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't uh, stay with us for a while, because yeah. the food's ready around the time the band goes on. And uh, the food is fragile. And my big concern always is the food not going bad. Mm. So uh, the people that volunteer for us know to uh, pick up the food and then leave to deliver it to their uh. place that they're bringing it to. But well, who, uh, who, if I could ever help you, I will see what I could do. Who, who, who picks up the food in Los Angeles? Is that Amy? Amy Riley uh, arranges for it, and we have probably a dozen, if not more, large facilities that will go and pick the food up. I had an interesting thing today. Uh, we work with a management company in New York, and they do maintenance of large uh, office buildings. And I just got a call that- Aramark? No, this is a, a private brand company oh. that does sustainability. And I got an email, Sid, we, we have 700 rolls of toilet paper, half rolls of toilet paper, and we want to donate it. And uh, we will get agencies, because if you're going to eat, you got to shit. And Definitely. toilet paper is expensive. So that we're able to get them uh, copious amounts of toilet paper is huge. And this company understands our value, because I'll convert the paper, value of the paper, into greenhouse gas uh, diversion numbers. So paper has a value uh, when it's not going into landfill, mm -hmm. as does plastic and food. Uh, and we give companies like buildings numbers that they put up on their realty. You know, these buildings are owned by billionaires. Well, well, uh, just, buildings, just, just a question doesn't the paper eventually go into landfill when it's used? I mean, the toilet paper may not giving, be wasted, uh, but, but it's used. But we're giving it a second life. Right. We get a life that it would not have had. So we're actually okay. saving a roll of paper from being used by giving a roll of paper that would have been divested. Run away. Okay. Away. Makes sense. Uh, and, and that value has become more and more as uh, buildings are becoming greener. And companies like the company that we're dealing with uh, want everything to become more sustainable. Uh, even things like shutting off electricity at certain times of the night, uh, when it could be on the whole time, they could get by with less power, which is again, saving our planet. Uh, the same applies to water consumption. Uh, the less water that is used, the better it is for the planet. 
And we work with companies that are very involved in sustainability. Yeah. Uh, and, and we've been blessed. We were doing it a long time. And our whole earth calculator is now being used more than ever to give people statistics as to how successful. Now, I, I, I've, I've got a problem for you to, to solve or not solve. Well, but, I but, 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 but I get so I get so pissed off. I live next to a big park. I mean, it's uh, I, I don't, it probably. Uh, you know, it, one, one track uh, I run around the track, it's one point three miles which is uh, the circumference that's only part of the tra uh, track. Now I'll go sometimes, well, it used to be when it's raining outside. In the morning, it could be raining the whole day and I'll run there and I'll see them use the sprinklers will go off automatically. And as it's raining, the water is being wasted on the sprinklers. Now uh, I've, I've, I've gone to the parks department and they say, oh, there's no way we can control it because it's all automated. I wonder if there's a way that they can control it. So it's it's absolutely, absolutely controllable. There are there are uh, what's called Dopplers that can uh, be set to be rain sensitive, mm -hmm. and it can absolutely stop the sprinkler from going and wasting water at that time. Okay. The, the, the next time I speak to them, next time yeah. I speak to them, I'm going to speak to you. Absolutely. Okay. If, if it ever rains again in Los Angeles. Yeah, that's probably not going to happen this year. No, um, I, I mean, now they, they, they have. Now rain, <laughs> if, if we could just find a way to funnel what we have on the East Coast this year, we've had the rainiest summer. I don't even know how many years to go back, how much rain came. In Central Park, I think I mentioned to you, yeah. we have seven inches of rain fell in one day. I don't think we've had remember that. I don't think we've had seven inches of rain this whole year. And that was one afternoon in Central Park. Yeah, because they were talking about the the Colorado Colorado River is drying up. Wow. And, and, I love and, that river. And, and I think Lake Mead is drying up. I think it was uh, only 30, 35% full. It, I mean, it's a real catastrophe. Absolutely. And it's going to be one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, aside from drinking, the, the, the farmers are going to be, uh, are, are cutting back on their crops, which of course is gonna raise the, uh, you know, the cost of vegetables. It's, it's amazing. All connected. Yeah. Anyway, so I mean, the, uh, I, I don't have that connection to the stones as you do, but it's, uh, I mean, since, since, since Charlie, uh, you know, Charlie is, uh, we always looked at the Rolling Stones and say, oh my God, they're still going strong. And, you know, it, it, it was sort of a, uh, they were sort of like icons to my age group. You know, right. look at the stones, you know, Mick, Mick is, I think, 78 and he's still strutting around like this bantam cock, the, uh, you know, on the stage and, and, and Keith looks like he died about 30 years ago, but he's still going strong. Yeah, and, and Charlie Watt is, is, you know, everybody is still praising him as being great drummer. He was great till last year when he probably uh, caught cancer and uh, cancer killed him. Yeah, and, and he has, and, and I know people, a lot of people don't realize he also has a few jazz albums. He was a jazz drummer oh, as well. I just finished reading actually, there was a great bio on him. And he would draw pictures of the rooms that he would sleep in on the road. Uh, and just so that he, he could uh, not have to go out and to uh, get him thinking about his home. Yeah, and well, there are hundreds and hundreds of hotel room pictures that he's done. Well, uh, do did they, did they have a book on that? Uh, I think it's, it's a private collection. Uh, well, so, 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 soon it'll be published. You know what? He was he was always the stone that did not need the kind of publicity that Mick uh, looked forward to. Mick has eight children with, I think, five different women. Mm -hmm. uh, Keith's been married for a while now, which is great. But Charlie was a homebody. Look yeah. forward, look forward to getting home after the tour. Yeah, I mean, he but, was. A, yeah. But didn't he want was to. A, yeah, he, he, he was a solid guy. The uh, yes. uh, he, he did his gig and he went home. I, yep. I don't. Even, I don't even know if he did drugs. Don't know. Because it was not, not my business. It, that might be Charlie on the phone from the afterlife. 
Oh, hold on one second. It is rock and wrap it up. You, you don't want to buy any. No, they're saying that uh, drugs are coming in from Mexico. And oh, we're... really? Gee, I didn't know that. <laughs> all good. Yeah, well, I, I, I wonder if the drugs were coming from Mexico, if, if all drugs were legal, not only uh, marijuana. Uh, you know what? I went to uh, Nogales when I was there last just south of uh, Tucson. Yeah. And I was, able to buy, I was able to buy some of my diabetic drugs much cheaper there. A lot of people go to Canada to get drugs mm -hmm. that are too expensive. Well, I, I guess it depends on, uh, you know, where you're near, what part of the country you live in. Oh, absolutely. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a good fan of generic drugs to a point, but it should not cost the companies that make the drugs because they've probably only one out of 20 drugs that they've spent tens of millions of dollars to develop actually become saleable. But, 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 but uh, isn't a lot of that development money uh, subsidized by the government, the Absolutely. federal government? Absolutely not. No, I thought it was. No, 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 no. I worked in that business many, many years and shareholders money was used to develop those drugs right. and loans of banks. Uh, and a lot of companies went bankrupt if a drug didn't hit it. Uh, and the amount of money, I, I'm very much in favor of the 17 year patents. You know, so much money is put in uh, to develop these drugs that help all of us that uh, this is capitalism. They should get as much money as they can for their drugs. If you could buy it generically, God bless you. But most generic drugs I wouldn't take. Yeah, yeah, but you think they should outprice it where the uh, the general public or someone that might be suffering from you know that malady cannot afford the drugs? I have not seen that happen, Malcolm. I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, most of the drug companies are magnanimous. And if you send a letter uh, signed by your doctor, there's a good chance you will get a huge discount on your drug. Well, That's what I, uh, they've been doing now for the last five years. I, I haven't heard that. Uh, I think a typical thing right now is the cost of insulin. That's well, that is sky high. No, no, that has dropped down now. Has it? Because under Trump, Trump reduced it down from seven hundred dollars to seventy dollars, mm -hmm. and uh, that's it is much less expensive. Mm -hmm. But again, these pharmaceutical companies they have to make a living, and that's why our country is so great because we allow uh, number one FDA testing. I was very surprised that the FDA passed the Pfizer vaccine that quickly. Most vaccines take five to seven to 10 years to, to get FDA approval. But, but, but isn't this vaccine, I don't know, the te you would probably know the technical end of it. Isn't this vaccine manufactured to, or produced differently than the traditional vaccine has, uh, has yes. been produced? Because I, I think they used to use live uh, bacteria. No, no, no. no. Uh, live viruses. Yeah. This vaccine uses mRNA, which is different than how the J&J &J vaccine is made. So this, this vaccine uh, does, does not adversely affect your DNA in the sense that uh, it'll make you genetically predisposed to something, mm -hmm. but there still isn't a lot of data historically comparing it to other vaccines that I am not comfortable. I've taken the vaccine, I took the Pfizer vaccine, but I, I have doubts in my mind. You know, and it'll take probably one or two generations more to see if, if it does affect our chromosomes. And yeah. it, it, there, is, you, there is a cost benefit. The, the benefit is that you may not die of COVID. Uh, the risk is that you may have generational chromosomal damage. Yeah, but can't do if, 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 uh, if you die from uh, the virus, you did. You have generation. You have generation. Uh, you don't have damage. any. Generation. But, but but again, not all of us are going to uh, 
some people are more susceptible to getting the virus. Oh, I was, I was last year every day in front of 50 to 100 different people. I was lucky. My body, I'm sure, was exposed to it. I did not come down with it. Did, did, you, wear a, did, you, wear, did you wear a mask? Not all the time. Okay. Uh, but I did not have a propensity to develop yeah. that particular problem. Or, or as you say there, but for the grace of God go I. Absolutely. But I took the vaccine when it was available because um, I believe in vaccines. Yeah. A lot of people don't believe in vaccines for the same reason I said earlier, they don't know long-term effects. Yeah. But I, I, now, I, I, yeah. now that the FDA has approved it, uh, it takes away some of the speed bumps of the reasons why people did not take the vaccine until now. And yeah. hopefully many more will take it now. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm just wondering how much of the not taking the vaccine is more politically oriented than uh, uh, medically oriented. Like I, I was wondering the people who say, no, I'm not going to take a vaccine. If they have the polio vaccine, if they have the pneumonia vaccine, if they have the meningitis vaccine, if they vaccinated their kids when they were born, I'm wondering if they have none of that. I can understand if someone is anti-vaccine in general and they never do took know, anything. Do you know anyone that has not taken the vaccine at this point? I know one person who has not who happens to be a uh, holistic doctor uh -huh. and, and, and she studied in Canada and uh, she will not take the vaccine. She doesn't like, like vaccines in general. She thinks they're dead, but that's the so, only person I know. Right. So 99.9% .9 of the people that you know, and I know, right. I know also one person. Uh, he has underlying medical conditions. He is allergic to metals uh, and the vaccines do have trace metals in them. Yeah. Okay. And, but so that's 99.9% .9 of my people that we, that that we know. know. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I'm going to say that the majority of people that uh, have the opportunity to take it have taken it. Yeah. But, now, I, but, but I think the uh, un, unvaccinated uh, population, the general population, is about 30, 35%. I think it's only well, about 70% un, un, have. Unfortunately, in the New York area, the majority of people are African Americans that have not taken it. Mm -hmm. Hospital workers have not taken it. So when you take this cohort that, for whatever their reason, refuses to take it, I respect that. They're not going to take it. So what? Well, well, I'm going to protect myself. Well, yeah. Well, two things because number I there was. Uh... On a Facebook, I, I, got, I, I don't know who it was. It was a kid, a kid, you know, a kid who's about 35 years old and his wife had uh, breast cancer and she was being treated. And there was something she had, uh, uh, you know, some, some sort of things where she had to stay in the hospital. And uh, he took her to the hospital and she was, the treatment took, I think, four or five days and they only let him do three days. And he said, why? Because they didn't have any beds there because everybody had uh -huh. uh, people were, were with the uh, virus had uh, COVID-19. And they he said that about 90% of those with the COVID-19 in the hospital had not been vaccinated. So his thing was, if you don't believe in doctors, if you don't believe what they say, if you don't believe in medicine, why the hell are you going to the hospital when you get sick? Stay home. Let my wife and people who are vaccinated be in the hospital or emergency people being in the hospital, okay. which I'm in agreement to. Same way, if you're going to uh, uh, you know, be part of my life, you should be vaccinated. In other words, the police, they should be vaccinated. The uh, male people should be vaccinated. Federal workers that I have to deal with should be vaccinated. If you're, uh, you know, if you don't want to be vaccinated, fine. Just stay out of my life and stay out of, uh, you know, where I, where I am. Look, well, we have this right now in New York and you have it in California. Uh, Governor Cuomo, before he left office, mandated, and as did de Blasio, every school teacher, every school employee from top to bottom has to be vaccinated by September 21st. Yeah. Or they will not work. Yeah, well, isn't a part of that if, if uh, you're not vaccinated, you have to take a test? Uh, no, you know, no, 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 no. Does he have that, to? Was, that changed. Uh, yeah, week. okay. 
I, I mean, then I agree with you. you know, people say you're taking away my civil liberties. Yeah, it's, a, it's an emergency here. So I, I have one of my grandsons, my daughter just called. Uh, they live in Petaluma, he's in first grade. Uh, they got a note home saying that a family member of a student in his grade came down with COVID. And they just wanted the school to know that our grandson was exposed to someone whose family had COVID, but uh, they were in a, watching a movie together, two classrooms, probably about 50 kids. And uh, since my grandson, as all other of his friends wear masks in school, this kid wore a mask. How diligent is the school needing to be? Do they have to quarantine the whole school now that a family member exposed a child? It's it's a dilemma. I know. Well, not you know, to me, it's not necessarily, but they have to uh, quarantine the school. But if another case comes up in that school with those classrooms, then they definitely should uh, until something else comes up. Because that, that's what's happening with uh, my cousin's kids, uh, you know, we're also in uh, elementary school. Uh, you know, they were sent home. They said you have to be, well, they said you have to be quarantined. Well, the entire school is going to have a COVID test next week. The whole school. Yeah. We're making every kid take a COVID test. Yeah, as I say, it's a new norm. And people who say, no, I don't want to do it. And, you know, say my civil liberties. I, say, I mean, to me, that's bull. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's an emergency here. You have to go. You, you have to deal like this is an emergency. It's a health risk. I mean, it's definitely there. People are dying. It's not, it's not fake. It's not people aren't dying. It's not the uh, QAnon type of thing. It's, it's created well, to, uh, for the government to control us. To, uh, compared to last year, it's one hundredth of the death rate as it was last summer at this time. Right. Thanks to the vaccine. Thanks to the and the virus changing. It has mutated into a, a deviation that is less viral in that it causes less death. What, what about is, the, the Delta is supposed to be more viral. It is more viral, but it's it's less morbidity. Well, I'm well, I, it's supposed to be more contagious also that we can discuss. But a few less deaths. That's all that people want to hear. Oh, anyway, Sid, believe it or not, our half hour is up. That was pretty quick. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was a pretty lively conversation. We will speak to you next week. Speak to you next week. Also, remember, tell your friends, tell everybody. Let's we do. And, and also find out, which I've been doing in all my shows, I need someone that knows social marketing. You know, I don't know how, you know, really we take this show and we expose it aside from, you know, uh, my, my putting it on my Facebook and you putting it on your thing. It's I know there 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 are listings, and the way we can put on. And I also can do it. I can also do the show audio only, so we could do it on any of the audio stations. But I don't know how to do it. I I, need, I will continue. I, I need help because I think I think it's it's a very good show, and you have a very good service, and I want to I want to reach millions of people with uh, with this that otherwise wouldn't know what you're doing. And, I'm, I, and as I say, I'm always asking on my other shows, especially the people that volunteer a lot, I'm doing that with the, the American Legion, I'm doing with the, uh, and several of my other shows, I'm telling about uh, a rock and wrap it up. Thank you. It's, it's, it's a worthy cause. Anyway, Sid, have a great week. You too. Great care, Matthew. Good to see you. Bye-bye.